Okay, hi guys, this is Mr. Manning, and this is going to be a quick video about how to do a payroll register. So, uh, hopefully you've already watched the video about payroll, and you found out that a payroll register is basically like a document that shows all the employees, and it shows some information about them, such as their marital status, uh, their name of course, their employee number, uh, how many exemptions they have, how much money they make, and how many hours they worked. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually fill one of these out for a few employees and then I'm going to uh, let you guys try the rest on your own. This green area here, oh I should stop, by, uh, by the way this is of course Google uh, Sheets so you should have access to this document. Uh, another couple of documents you're going to need that are um, that you should have access to is the um, photo of the tax table for married people and the photo for tax people tax table for single people. Okay, so let's look at this. This blue section is um, all about the employees and their information. Um, the green section is their earnings. The red section is all of their deductions. Uh, mostly it's going to be taxes. And then finally right over here the yellow section is going to be their net pay. And if you remember net pay is the amount of money that an employee earns after taxes and other deductions are taken out. Okay, so let's start right here with employee number nine, John Bast. John is single. He has two exemptions. He makes $13.53 an hour. And for the pay period that we are doing the payroll for, he worked 80 hours with zero overtime hours. Okay, so first we're going to figure out regular earnings. Uh, regular earnings is just simply the amount of hours he worked times his rate of pay. So since we're using Google Sheets, we're going to do a really quick uh, formula. So I'm going to take rate of pay, and I'm going to multiply that by the hours that John worked. Hit enter. And Google Sheets tells me that John earned $1,082.40. Overtime earnings, so John didn't work any overtime hours, so we don't technically have to uh, calculate this. We do have a few employees that did, so when you get to those employees, you are going to need to calculate their overtime earnings. Uh, because you're going to need to know how to do that, I'm going to really quickly uh, step you through it. So let's imagine that John did have overtime. Uh, I am going to do another formula, so I type equals, and I'm going to take his um, the hour. Uh, okay, I'm going to take his rate of pay, but I need to multiply this by 1.5 because overtime is time and a half, or 1.5. So I actually want to do that before I multiply the number of hours that he worked. So this formula is going to be a tiny bit complicated because it's going to include um, parentheses. So I'm going to start a parentheses, and I'm going to take his rate of pay. I'm going to multiply that by 1.5. Close the parentheses, and then I'm going to multiply it by the number of overtime hours that John worked. And we know that it's zero, but if there was a number, it would be located right here. So I hit enter, and it tells me that he's getting paid zero dollars for overtime. Gross earnings is just simply these two added together, uh, regular earnings and overtime. So equals regular earnings plus overtime earnings. Hit enter, 1,082.40. All right, so this is how much John made before taxes and other deductions. Now we're going to get into the red section. This is the not-so-fun section because this is money coming out of our paycheck. So let's start with federal taxes. To determine federal taxes, and I put a little kind of hint note down here to help you, but to determine for federal taxes, you need to look at the tax table, which is on page 347 and 348 in your books. Now, I don't think you guys have access to your books, most likely. So what I did is I just simply took a picture of page 347 and 348, and I posted it for you. 
there are two different tax tables and they look like this. And I'll talk a little bit about how to read them in a moment. But one thing that's really important is one of the tax tables is for single people. So people that are not married. And then the other tax table is for married people. So whenever you determine their tax, make sure that you check out their marital status and make sure you're looking at the correct tax table for them. John is single. So we are going to do the tax table for single people. Okay. Um, the other two pieces of information I didn't know is how much John earned, so his gross earnings, and his number of exemptions. John earned $1,082.40, and he has two exemptions. The reason those two pieces of information are important is because on this tax table, there's going to be two sections that I'm looking for. Number of exemptions are across the top, so they are the columns. And the amount of money that they earned, the employee, is on the side, so this would be the rows. All right, so John has two exemptions, so I'm going to be in this column. And he made $1,082.40. So I need to find the correct row for John, $1,082.40. So I'm going to zoom in here. Hopefully this will help a little. There is a section right here between 1,080 and 1,100. That is where John's going to fall. And I know that these rows are kind of hard to look at whenever you zoom in really close, so you might want to use your mouse to kind of help you go straight across. I want to be in the second, actually I guess it's the third column because 0, 1, 2, so third column for John all the way down to 1,080 to 1,100. So one more time, I'm going to zoom in 1,080 to 1,100 and that is $94 right there. So that tells me that for federal taxes, John is going to get $94 taken out of his paycheck. The good news is federal taxes is the only time where you have to use that table. <laughs> Social Security and Medicare are determined by um, a percentage. So speaking of Social Security, it is 6.2%. So we are going to multiply our gross earnings by 6.2%. 6 so we're going to do another formula for this. Equals gross earnings times 6.2%. And this is super important. Make sure you type the percentage symbol. If you don't type the percentage symbol, your number is going to be way too big. So I hit enter. Looks like Social Security is going to get $67.11. Medicare is 1.45. So pretty much the same thing. I'm going to multiply gross earnings by 1.45 percent. Hit enter one more time, and they're going to get $15.69. Okay. These last two columns are already filled in for you. There's not like a formula or a table that you can look for. Um, as the accountant for a business, you would already know this information, most likely because it's going to happen every single pay period. Um, John pays $42 per pay period for health insurance. And he's a pretty nice guy. He's a charitable guy. He's also giving $10 to a charity. So there are five different things that we needed to deduct or take out of John's check. Federal taxes, Social Security, Medicare, health insurance, and the charity. So we are going to write a formula, and I'm going to scroll over just a little bit here. We're going to write a formula that's going to take his gross earnings and subtract all these things. So equals gross earnings minus, and I'm going to do some parentheses here because I have a lot of things that I need to subtract, and I'm going to subtract federal taxes and Social Security and Medicare and health insurance and charity. And I close the parentheses and I hit enter. And we finally wind up with $853.60. So basically, John started with 1,082. After everything got deducted, he is left with 853.60. dollars 
this is the amount that will actually be in John's paycheck. Okay, so why don't you guys see if you can do the rest of the employees on your own. Good luck.